Thank you very much for the introduction and welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for being here after the conference banquet uh, for the first presentation. Uh, I'm, I'm coming from more from the computer science aspects and this is a joint work together with uh, uh, people coming from architecture, from geomatics and from philosophy. And uh, I will tell you uh, about some motivations and then I will introduce a data set that we are designing from a couple of years on uh, point clouds with different purposes. And then we will go a bit inside uh, the deep learning approaches for point cloud classification. Uh, and again, you will understand better, I think, when uh, we discuss about motivation. And uh, then we introduce the general idea of ethical, of ethical AI approaches with uh, the explainability idea and the bias idea also applied to point clouds in cultural heritage domain. Um, in the last part, I will give you a short introduction of OBLEX, that is a new methods that we are designing for the explainability frameworks on the point cloud classification in cultural heritage. And finally, we'll go to conclusion and, we, and I have a final call for contribution that I will share with you. So what are, what, our, what are our vision and what is the main objectives of this research? We are trying to investigate better how AI can help on uh, uh, cultural heritage uh, point cloud analysis uh, with a focus on two main vision. One is the scan to beam uh, vision that is also very common on uh, general engineering application and the other one is the scan to XR. Uh, trying to move directly and try to make all that we can uh, for automatizing the process that is going from uh, general scanning uh, to extend the reality application. Uh, the second main motivation and objective is that uh, uh, we now have a lot of challenges uh, on the explainability side. And uh, every time that we discuss about deep learning approach going on uh, point cloud classification, we have to face also with uh, some new indication coming also from UNESCO, from uh, the European Commission and so on and so on. And I will give you some insight on that. And then our view is to give uh, some new sectoral guidelines for data acquisition, again to power the data collection, but also to better understand how we can work to reduce biases. Uh, and you will see that we have a lot of them when we go on cultural heritage and um, also to try to define uh, a way for policymakers to understand how to benchmark different solution and how to acquire and benchmark different solution for scanning and uh, for going to extended reality or to BIM. Uh, wh why that? Uh, you know that usually now every, everyone also this, this mobile phone has a LiDAR on it and we can scan and get a lot of point clouds. But, um, uh, given that uh, we, we are still far away on having a high level of automation on that, there is still a lot of manual work behind and there is still a lot of people doing this manual work with a lot of assumption, uh, sometimes personal or human assumption at least. That's why we, we started designing a, a, a first quite big data set. It's a, a, over 15 million points uh, manually annotated uh, on having uh, the ability of classifying point clouds on cultural heritage is a public data set that we can we call this architectural cultural heritage point cloud for classification and semantic segmentation the second part is the most relevant uh, when we discuss about this the challenge is more on the semantic segmentation of the different point clouds in the cultural heritage domain um, you, can, you can find over there the website and you can download and uh, reuse this kind of data set whenever you want. It's becoming, let's say, more and more common the use of these uh, uh, data sets also on the deep learning and point cloud community. Uh, starting from here, we designed uh, some novel sets of uh, deep learning approaches. I will not go in details on that, but just to understand, uh, we introduced the very recently some modification of a very, very famous uh, point cloud classification and semantic segmentation network that is the point net, the first one that you see on the top. The goal is always the same, eh? to try to understand different areas, different sense, different semantics for every area of the point cloud that I just scanned. And this totally without any 
a priori knowledge without any pre-processing, without any data cleaning. Again, uh, the goal is to go directly from the scan, for example, to a virtual reality application or for a, for a scan to a BIM application. Uh, you see here are some, some, some of these examples and also you see that uh, all the uh, data set, all the arch, arch, arch cultural heritage the data set uh, is divided also with some test scene where the uh, annotated point cloud uh, are not public. This is why we are talking often and you will listen, you will listen from me several times talking about uh, benchmarking because we want to design something that is also useful for making a public benchmarking of several approach on this idea. Uh, so you can train using scenes with all the annotation, but then on the validation, uh, we can come back uh, to, uh, to, to tell you if this new scene, never seen before, never used for training, uh, is correctly segmented or not. And you can find here some of the common metrics. Again, uh, we can discuss a lot if these kind of metrics are suitable or not for cultural heritage classification, because uh, you will see later on we have a huge amount uh, of uh, unbalancing uh, inside uh, this kind of data sets. So we are not building streets, uh, we are not uh, uh, classifying traffic likes or cars, okay? They, these are more common and more easiest problems uh, in the field. Um, you see also that uh, we are far away from a perfect solution. Eh? That means uh, that there are a lot of challenges in the middle. If you go on other very famous data sets uh, uh, on uh, urban environments, you can find better and better results, but urban environments are much more easier and balanced with respect to ancient cultural heritage. And uh, again, when uh, we try to uh, design uh, this kind of data set, uh, we also try to understand if going and adding uh, some uh, other kind of features on the 3D shape, so adding some uh, let's say pre-processing is bringing to some more powerful results, some more optimal results. And here you see an example where if we add some normal vectors to the, to the surface, only asking to the neural network to do this for us in the first layers of the neural network, we can update, uh, obtain much higher values. Uh, for example, in the F1 score, that is a quite common uh, accuracy metrics. And again and again, we are moving forward in this field, trying to add uh, every few months some new results. This is another idea, again, embedded in the neural network. We don't want to process nothing on uh, human uh, uh, features and crafted features, okay? So that's why you, you see over there, there is a name of it, another neural network coming from, from our lab that is also embedding some 3D features. How we can embed 3D features in neural network and designing uh, some 3D layers uh, when the, the, the point cloud is passing layer by layer in the different layers of the deep networks. But uh, given all this um, um, approach, uh, we can also see very well that uh, there are uh, still a lot of challenges. Just have a look to the results on the windows. Windows are assumed to be a very, very common content in every 3D building, okay? But if we go on cultural heritage, it's really a disaster, okay? You see there, the accuracy is going down and I'm near to zero. Everything, everything is mixed together. And if you look on the right, you can see that uh, some uh, uh, architectural elements uh, that are windows or can be classified as windows are totally different one from each other. So now the question is, how can we can better understand this? And now this idea of better understanding is going in on the direction of uh, uh, using or reusing different uh, uh, indication that are coming uh, on the explainability side, on the ethical AI side, on the AI act that is coming out in Europe, uh, on several discussion that now we have, uh, mainly due to ChatGPT. Uh, discussion, but all these points can be totally applicable also to any other AI solution. So on the European side, we have uh, the white paper uh, on trustworthy AI that is telling us, uh, please, when you develop something on AI, be careful on, on this, this, and this. And among these, there is explainability. A lot of this is about explainability. On the right side of my slide, you have the ICOM Code of Ethics and the UNESCO recommendation from ethi for ethics of AI. Same story, hmm? 
but if you read the, deeply the UNESCO recommendation, you can find inside the, a lot of very nice challenges for us and for our community. And these challenges are totally going on the direction of the two yellow areas. So one is reliability. We need to understand if this is really working or not, and when it's not working, we need to understand a little bit why. And please remember that uh, the only way to have some kind of results in point cloud classification and semantic segmentation is to use uh, deep learning. That means millions of parameters and means also a usual black box approach. The other one is explainability. Same, same story, almost same story, but not looking on data, but looking to the models that is able to segment the data. And that's why we try to move forward also in this direction. So the question now is, are we able to reuse the experience that was born using deep learning on cultural heritage and using the UNESCO guidelines to better understand the explainable approach on cultural heritage segmentation? And our solution is this bubble X uh, that I will shortly introduce, is going on the direction of GradCam. It's a very simple solution to understand and to map the, the, the single layers of a network and the gradients of these layers on a map like this one. So what, what is the meaning of colors? When it's red, that means that this area of the image is relevant for the network for classification. And if we go to point cloud, you will see some of my examples. And when you see points that are reds, that means that this area is interesting for the model that is classifying cars. Just to give you a very famous example on explainability, if we want to classify uh, fishes, for example, uh, the best solution for a neural network to classify this is to understand if there is water outside. And you see all red in the water and nothing on the fish. If you put a balloon in the middle of the water, the classification is fish because it's something in the water. Because the training set was always something on the water, something on the water, and the neural network that is a quite stupid statistic solution was understanding that everything is, that is in the water is a fish. Okay? That's why we need, we need a solution like this to understand better why the windows are not classified or are misclassified, do, do we have a bias or not, and so on and so on. And we started trying to understand layer by layer, what you see there, don't care about uh, uh, complex matter over there, but uh, the, what you see there is uh, for every layer, we try to understand what are the points that are more relevant, and we try to map these points. Nothing more, huh? it's a very, very simple approach. But it's the first one going, and it's, and it's not the, first, the only one, but it's one of the first going in this direction. And uh, also we can map on uh, different feature space, uh, both the ground truth and what is then classified. That means that we have a certain idea on bias on data, on bias on the data sets. And that's why we want to make these maps. Uh, just to give you a, a very quick examples, when we learn something on the deep side, we have the point cloud data sets, we have the network for semantic segmentation, then we can have two models. One is the visualization one. We are looking for data bias, okay? We have a very, very few examples of Windows, that's why Windows are not working at all. The second one is looking for explainability. So we have the activation map, that means the, the, the weights of the layer of the network plus the gradients. We combine everything and we have this GradCam map. Red is relevant for the network, blue is not relevant for the network. And if we, we look to some uh, very common approach, let me give you an example. This is a, this is a mapping example. So we have uh, the ground truth and the prediction. And you see very well the differences, but you also see very well that probably we have uh, some problems on uh, the overlapping of some ground truth with respect to the features that the network is able to learn. When, um, when we say overlapping, we are talking about aliasing. And so no way to understand if this is a window or not, uh, or a wall or things like this. And when we go to explainability, when uh, I was telling you about the GradCam, hmm, this is something that we already discussed. I want only to show you a very quick and uh, easy example. So we can have uh, this kind of explainability over there, and uh, we can also have uh, uh, another example like this. Now, let's take a car, okay? 
the car is uh, mapped on the, on the uh, activation, mapped on the gradients, and then we have uh, this final map. But the final map is telling us that the, re the relevant part to classify this point cloud as a car are the wheels, you see the red, the red dots over there, and the car top. That makes sense, huh? but uh, if we understand that to classify the car we only need the street, this is a problem. It's like the water and the fish. And uh, again, uh, if we go on our, on our heritage point cloud, this is, so these are some examples of uh, what is on a city level and what is on a cultural heritage level. I think it's totally clear that here there is the challenge. On, the, on our, our data set is really full of aliasing, full of strange things that appears in the space of other strange things and is totally different from the, for example, the city-like scenario that you see on the, on the first column. And again, going to the uh, last examples, and then we will move to the conclusion. You can see several, several examples here of the interpretation. Here you have uh, one of the class, and you see on the red what, does the, what are the relevant points to understand that this class. This class is one of the, of the one working very, very well. We have columns there, we have uh, any other several other architectural contents and you see that the red is on the right position because also we as human understand this kind of architectural elements from this point. But then if we move forward, for example, for example on uh, other points that are not classified, you see that here uh, the point cloud is very hard to understand also for a, for a human. And again, the network is not understanding nothing. It's totally green without any red point. And uh, here we have some door window misclassification. And you see that even if the window is totally far away from a normal window, uh, the network is searching from, for something vertical. You see the red part. But then it's not over there and it's not clear. So probably that's why it's not working. We have a lot of uh, different shapes. Uh, what does it mean for us? that probably we need not to classify or to make semantic segmentation on the concept of window, but we need to go deeper on that and to have a different kind of windows and so on and so on. But also on the architectural side, I think you agree that we cannot call these windows. And some more examples on that, and I go really uh, fast on these. You see over there that there are some of them that are totally misclassified and uh, uh, are not assumed to be windows, also because are joined together, are a lot of windows totally together without any geometric approach. And please take care that point clouds are strongly dependent on, on uh, this kind of, of geometric contents. So finally, my conclusions. Uh, so again, the point cloud for cultural heritage is a challenging approach. Uh, with dark data set, uh, we are doing a some first step in this direction. The explainability approaches is still something novel in this field and we want to focus on, the, on this and try to take together the UNESCO guidelines that are really nice. And I, I strongly invite you if you, have not, if you are not aware to have read on that. And there are a, a lot of still open criticalities on the mapping system and uh, uh, we need to move forward also on this side. And uh, there is a long discussion if we can use a synthetic data sets in this kind of field. Uh, we are on the side that uh, with the moving technology and the scanning everything on our ends, uh, there is a still an open space for using together real and synthetic data sets. And finally, there is a, a future point going on. So now there is this NERF revolution that is uh, using images, not only scans, to build 3D models. This is a, a, a very famous approach from Google Research. It's named the Nerf on the Wild, if you want to look at. But uh, these 3D models that you see here are totally coming from touristic pictures on Instagram. Okay? Totally unstructured touristic picture on, on Instagram. You see the Fontana de Trevi. For sure, you have 10,000 pictures per day. But you see also some very other landmarks for modern cultural heritage, and this is something that is really nice for preservation, 
uh, but also for engagement of uh, people with this idea of rebuilding 3D shape of cultural heritage. And you see the results is very nice. Huh? It's very good. Totally based on NERF that are not the guns with the plastic sticks, uh, but are neural radiance fields. That is something that is very near to the explainability concept that I was telling you, but on the other side. So we are taking a picture and coming back to a 3D model. We are taking thousands of pictures and coming back to the point cloud. And I think that this is interesting. My final call for collaboration. So we are looking for other data sets and other uh, research teams that are working on this area, mainly to design together a benchmark on explainable AI methods. Uh, second point, we are running a special issue on ACM Journal of Computer and Cultural Heritage, and we are looking both for co-editors and contributors. Thank you very much.